According to Baseball Reference, there were 45 total no-hitters pitched in the minor leagues last season. Remember, this was a shortened season, too, in some leagues. Uh, the game is undoubtedly changing before our eyes. We're seeing record strikeout numbers in untraditional approaches at the plate, velocities and spin rates on the rise for pitchers, resulting in more wear and tear, and in turn, the number of pitches per outing for starters is seeing a decline. Plenty of factors are making the 27 consecutive outs more prevalent, and more often than not, they're combined no-hitters these days, but I'd be lying if I said I still didn't get excited every single time I hear about one. So today I'm going to talk about every 2022 no-hitter so far. Chase DeYoung, who has done some time in the majors, brought us this year's first no-hitter just seven days into the season for the Indianapolis Indians. He turned in seven hitless with Austin Bryce covering the eighth and Yeri De Los Santos closing it out in the ninth. DeYoung couldn't have made a better case for himself in AAA and he now finds himself in the Pirates bullpen with an even two ERA. I think he's where he belongs. Nick Sweeney, one of several exciting pitching prospects in the Giants farm system, started a seven inning no-hitter for the Eugene Emeralds over the Tri-Cities Dust Devils. This seven inning no-hitter of course happens in a doubleheader situation. Cole Waits and Nick Avila closed this one out. I'm sure neither of them minded the asterisk for the shortened game no-hitter beside their name in the record books. The Chicago Cubs have a lot of good arms to look forward to as their farm system has dealt two no-hitters in two months. The first one was May 1st in single A when the Myrtle Beach Pelicans dominated the Columbia Fireflies. The starter was Walker Powell. Powell is no stranger to the no-no as he's also tossed one in college for Southern Mississippi. Adam Laskew and Jake Rindle also joined in the fun. Just 10 days later, the Cubs double-A Tennessee Smokies smoked the Montgomery Biscuits. That's an easy picture to paint, huh? <laughs> this masterpiece was put together by Peyton Remy, Sanis Correa, and Yuri Ramos. Remy got through six innings with just 65 pitches, and I'm convinced that just a few years ago he'd have never gotten pulled, but pitching coaches don't mind a roll of the dice these days, that's for sure. The only solo no-hitter so far was turned in on May 5th by Brian Bayo of the Portland Sea Dogs. He has some potent stuff, fastball that tops out at 99, and great off-speed stuff too. He's since gotten called up to the AAA Woo Sox and is impressing there as well. I'm calling my shot here and saying he'll see some action in Boston late season. Garrett Stallings and Morgan McSweeney combined for a heartwarming Mother's Day no-hitter for the Bay Sox, shutting out the Harrisburg Senators in Game 1 of a doubleheader. They would go on to win the second game and sweep the series. I'm seeing rave reviews on both of these pitching prospects for the Orioles. A trio of Fort Myers Mighty Muscles no-hit the Palm Beach Cardinals on May 10th. David Festa started the effort with Jalen Nallen and Hunter McMahon finishing it off. The Mighty Muscles also threw the last no-hitter of the 2021 season in the minors on September 18th. The low A twins have offenses in a stranglehold in the Florida State League. Sometimes lightning strikes twice. Four San Antonio Missions pitchers combined for a no-hitter and a 4-0 victory against the Arkansas Travelers on May 15th. On May 18th, four San Antonio Missions pitchers combined for a no-hitter and a 4-0 victory against the Midland Rockhounds this time. That's two no-hitters in a span of three games. This entire pitching staff of young Padres seems like a well-oiled machine. Shout out to Balapino for narrowly avoiding being trampled there. 